Hello everyone, welcome to Court with Chrissy. After stealing a large sum of money from her friends, Klepto Karen has had to come to court because she can't seem to pay restitution. I'm pretty sure she's got 99 problems and a disability is not one of them. I hope you like it. Court with Chrissy is now in session. Marianne Groff, DOJ. I have Agent Gretchen. I have Ms. Harvey still connecting. Who is 515? That's Lori Harvey. I'm on the phone while I'm waiting for this, um, my Zoom to connect. I, I can see you, but it's asking me to choose the audio, audio conference options. And Well, that's yeah. fine. Um, I'm fine if you don't do the audio and you're still, and you're just on the phone, um, but I would like okay. to see you. Okay, so I'm going to start this. Hold on, taking the audio <laughs> off. Then. Um. Can you see me? I can see yes. you. Yes. Uh, no, I cannot okay. see you. It just oh, says. What I do? Um, sorry. I'm so not good at this stuff. Oh, video. There it goes. If that helps, does that help you? You see me now? Yes, yes, I can see okay. you now, and that's just fine. Okay. All right. We will go on the record in the matter 20 CF91, State of Wisconsin versus Lori Harvey. The state appears through Assistant District Attorney Kevin Schmidt in person. Ms. Harvey appears by video conferencing. Uh, with approval of the court, we have Mary Ann Groff, DOJ victim witness, appearing by video. Um, uh, DOC agent Gretchen appearing by video. <clears throat> um, we're set today in this matter for the probation review hearing. I believe it's to set um, payments, restitution payments, and to try and uh, get the restitution paid. Um, Mr. Schmidt, what do you have for the court? Um, okay. So for evidence, first, I'd like to call, can I call Lori Harvey to ask her just a few questions? And adversely. Okay, I'd call it Lori Harvey. All right, Ms. Harvey, please raise your right hand. Yeah. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you, God? Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Schmidt. Lori, can you hear me? Yeah. How long have you been on disability? Ten, fifteen, I mean, it could be twenty years. I think it's been like fifteen years, for sure. Um, I'd have to go back and look. I mean, it's been almost, I'd say, almost twenty years. What is the disability or injury that caused you to be collecting disability from the government? I had a head injury in a car accident. I was two months in a coma, um, brain swell. They had to tap into my um, my head and drain the you know drain your fluid from swelling and then I had seizures afterwards and then I'm on you know I'm on anti seizure medicine and like I said I had the, I was in a coma for two months and slow at things. I mean I don't get things like other people do right away. It just takes me time. And hopefully I get it or I don't get it. I'm just slower. So this head injury occurred 15 or 20 years ago? Yep, it was, yeah, and it was airlifted to North Memorial. Uh, that had to you... happen. That had to happen 20 years ago. Sorry. Have you ever worked while collecting disability? No. And can you do any work now, even a sedentary job? Right now, um, I've got my arm in a sling. I just had surgery um, a week ago, and I've got scheduled for two knee surgeries coming up. Um, I I can't stand long, and my my balance is my inner your inner inner equilibrium or whatever. That's what is. I'm all. I'm all 
messed up. And all of a sudden, I can just fall if I want to. I get, like, dizzy. Okay. So is that a yes or a no? I must say no, sir. I'm sorry. And have you ever talked with Social Security about possibility of working while continuing to collect it? Have I talked to... I, they've sent me stuff in the mail for possibly work at... I'm not sure if I've talked to them or not. I know I just had a review. They just sent me a whole bunch of papers, and I just sent them all back to them. Um, that was like last month. They wanted to review on everything, and I um, said... I, I I don't know if I've actually talked to them. I know I've received information from them, um, possible working part time, but I, you know, between surgeries and everything else, I know. Okay. And just circling back to one thing, uh, I asked you if you had ever worked while collecting Social Security. Have you also ever volunteered anywhere to do any work for free while on Social Security? I've helped out uh, friends of mine if they needed, you know, I, I can, I'll do what I can do. You know, I don't expect anything, you know, just if somebody's in a bind, I would help somebody out, but I, I don't do it to make money off of it or anything like that. It's just to help somebody else. But it's, you know, it's how I'm feeling, you know, um, can't work long hours, can't work long days, you know, nothing like that. But when you do the volunteer stuff, you can do at least some partial work for friends and family. Until, well, until I can't, you know, it'll come to, you know, it, it, you could start doing stuff. And then all of a sudden, either I've got to sit down or I'm, I'm just done. My mind and everything is done. I'm just done for the day. You know, so it depends, you know, on the day and, you know, how I'm feeling and how everything is going and how my head is, you know. Okay. Uh, next, I think you submitted something to the court about your expenses that you signed um, sometime around April. Does that sound familiar? I I think, yeah. I want to say yes. I have to observe it, but I want to say yes. And you indicated to the court that in March your disability income was $1,130? Yep. But that and changed you the... That that was through them. They they changed that because then all of a sudden I got um, one hundred eighty four dollars more in my account. I'm like, what the heck's going on? And they they were taking my Medicaid out, and then they weren't supposed to, so they gave it back to me. So now my my um, income is one thousand three hundred and four dollars, I believe. Okay. And you indicated yeah, that, was, that I got a letter from. The, I'm sorry. And you indicated that as of March of 2024, your your bills just to live with not, nothing extra was $1,100? Yeah, because I was paying medical. I had stuff to pay for, for my medical, my, my prescriptions. Um, I don't drive, so I've got to pay for Uber, um, going to the doctors in and out. I mean, I since I got out in January, I've had nothing for a month and, you know, I had nothing for two years that with a physical stuff I needed done that they did not, would not do because they were afraid of me getting an infection in there. And oh yeah. Do you have any other sources of income other than social security disability? No, sir. I do not. I mean, I get from the state of um, Iowa here, I get $23 a month in food stamps. So I, I don't, I tell you that. That just happened a month or two ago. And are there any expenses you did not list on the sheet in April? I don't believe so. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just basic stuff. It's just my medical and, you know, go to the grocery store, I spent $198 and that's for two weeks, and you guys will do it again. And that's, so, I mean, the prices of everything. And then I think I have like 12 or 14 prescriptions, and I do have a copay of $4 on each one of them. So, like I said, I just, um, I don't do anything. I, I just stay home, I don't do nothing. 
And I have no other questions. Ms. Harvey, the great thing or not great thing probably for you or defendants is the fact that the court can inquire into um, income or other money received um, with people that the defendant is residing with. So you live with your mom um, mm -hmm. and you've lived with her only for a matter of a year or two or however long it's been uh, since you were released from custody. How long did, has she lived at uh, her place where you were residing? My, my mom's lived here, I believe it's Um, I can ask, I think it's like 20, 25 years, 20 years. I'm, I'd have to, she's in the That's next fine. I don't need exact. I don't need exact. Okay. And in that approximately 20, 25 years that she's lived at that uh, location, has she resided by herself? No, she lives with her husband, my stepdad, David Thompson. Her, so her husband lives there too. Yes. Are they both employed? No, they're both retired. My mom worked up until she was 70, till the COVID came. And then um, then she, her job had to, you know, she had to quit working. And then she was receiving um, uh, unemployment and stuff from the state, you know, for comp to comp All right. compensate. Mm -hmm. Um, you're adding uh, lots of words when I just need something short and, and sweet, okay? Okay. Um, so she's retired. Is your mother's husband retired? Yes, ma'am. And do they receive any type of retirement account stipend every month? Like from wherever they worked, do they get a retirement payment a month from an IRA? He does. Um, he does. does. My mom he does, David Thompson. My mom, no, she only thinks she gets the Social Security. Do you know how much retirement income um, your mom's husband receives? I do not know, ma'am. Do you know how much uh, Social Security income your mother receives? I think she's right around the same as what I get. I think it's like 13. Okay, and he probably receives Social Security as well, I would presume. I would think so. I all right. Now, what is the total lot rent for the trailer home that you are residing at? Not what you pay. How much is it a month totally? $650. It just went up $50. They just got notice from the last month. All right. So it's $650 a month. Okay. And... I see on your expense sheet that you state that groceries average about $100 to $125 per week. So to me, that's about $400 or $500 a month. Why, oh, why, oh, why does it cost that much for one person? I, well, I just went to Hy-Vee and it cost me $198 and then I'll do it again in two weeks. You know, I, I don't know why it costs so much. Just your basic basic stuff, laundry soap, toilet paper, um, groceries. Well, I wouldn't buy those things at Hy-Vee probably. You can probably go to Walmart I or go Target. go to Walmart. Yeah, you're right, ma'am. Because I'm gonna tell you, I have a family of four and it doesn't cost me that much. My daughter has a family of four and she spends $300 a week. Wowza. That's a lot. Grandsons. I have a, a teenage grandson and a preteen daughter as well. Yeah, and uh, I know what the teenage son eats, but it, I, I'm, I'm not seeing that it's $500 a month. And especially per person, that's a lot. All right, um, you receive food share, $23 a month. Now you have life insurance, I see, and you're paying that at $20 a month. Now with that life insurance policy, who are the beneficiaries? Kieran, my daughter. Kieran daughter? Yes. 
And what yes, is the uh, amount of payout if you were to uh, die? $1,000. Accidental death is $1,000. And that's through colonial pen. $1,000 only? Yes, ma'am, it is. I'm looking at the sheet right in front of me. I think I sent you a copy of it. I don't know if I have a copy, but it's only $1,000. Why don't you just put that $20 a month in the savings account? You can accrue at least minimal interest. And over the period of time, hopefully because you're still a youngish woman who has the ability to survive. Um, otherwise, you're throwing your $20 down the toilet. I, I, I didn't even, there's a premium, yeah, it's $20 a month. I don't, I don't know. I never thought of that, ma'am. I mean, it's common. It makes sense with financial you. sense. Makes sense. It, it makes sense with you talking. I didn't talk in like that. I didn't. After a period of four years, I don't know how long that has been in effect, but a period of four years, you've already paid your thousand dollars. No, it's everything not else you're effect. just throwing to the insurance company and letting a big business it's make the money. Been in effect since March third of this year. Well, doesn't sound like I a very practical it. policy. I, I didn't even think of that. Till you just told me that I could cancel it. Maybe you're right. It's better off just putting it in an account. You know, 20 bucks a month. I didn't think of that. So, All right. I think that's all the questions I have. Do you have any other questions off of my questions? Not for her. All right. Ms. Harvey. Yes. Well, she gets an opportunity to tell me as if she were asking herself questions, what she wants to tell me. So, Ms. Harvey, what would you like to let me know? off of uh, the questions and information you provided uh, from Mr. Schmidt. Um, I, I just wanted you right. I wanted, you know, I, if, I, I don't care if it takes me until I die to get this paid for, I will do it. I mean, I know I don't have a lot, but, you know, hopefully, you know, I get better and I can, you know, do more stuff when I get the knees replaced and, you know, all the crap done that I need to get done medically wise. You know, so I get to a point where I don't have to be like this and I can do more because okay. I owe it and I'm taking responsibility for it, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Next witness. Uh, Patrick Carlson. Mr. Carlson, or ins Investigator Carlson, please come forward, raise your right hand, have a seat at the witness stand. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to provide to the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Begin. Can you say your name and what your job is? Patrick Carlson, and I'm a detective with the Burnett County Sheriff's Office. On April 16th of this year, did you meet with me and the Malines? Yes. Uh, were you asked to do an investigation based off of that meeting? Yes. What were you asked to investigate? Uh, to look at previous, any possible employment by Lori Harvey. Uh, oh, what's going on? You heard. It started before I touched it. I'll turn your mic down a little bit. They might have still been up from yesterday. Okay. There you go. I'll have to do a test. Test. Go like this in the microphone. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, what was the result of that investigation? I had spoke to several previous employers that have uh, stated that she was employed by them. Uh, would you like me to go through the each employer? Yes. Uh, I spoke with, I'll start with the farthest back employer. It would have been Holiday Inn Express in St. Croix Falls. They stated she was employed there from February of 2016 to March of 2018 and that she had worked the front desk. Uh, I also was aware that she was previously employed at Walmart and actually had been caught shoplifting while employed there. I was able to get a police report from the St. Croix Falls Police Department that showed that she had uh, stolen from the store between the dates of 
May 15th, 2019 and July 3rd, 2019, and that she was an associate at the store at that time. Uh, I also spoke with my own creations uh, floral shop in St. Croix Falls, and they could not remember an exact date, but stated she was employed there in, Dece in a December several years ago. I was able to look at Lori Harvey's Facebook account and observed on December 21st of 2021, she had posted a, a floral arrangement that she had made at My Own Creation. So I believe her employment there would have been December of 2021. I also had spoken with Susie uh, from Susie Q's Snowshoe Tavern in Cushing, uh, who stated she was a friend of Lori and that Lori uh, was a volunteer and helped her in her bar. Uh, and she thought she was volunteering, but while she was volunteering, she was also stealing from her at the bar too. So for any of these places, was her end of employment for anything related to health or disability? Not to my knowledge. The Suzy Q was theft. The Walmart was also theft. Yes. Okay. And which of those places indicated she was working full time at that point? That'd be Holiday Inn uh, in St. Croix Falls. All right. What do you have any knowledge of as to how frequently she was working at the Walmart? I don't. Um, I'm going to show you two documents and ask you to identify them. This would be the St. Croix Falls police report that I obtained from the chief in St. Croix Falls. And this would be the Burnett County uh, incident report I completed on my contacts with her employee, previous employers. So the report summarizes your investigation. It's true and accurate. Yes. And the St. Croix report summarizes uh, St. Croix's investigation showing that Lori Harvey did work there? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd ask that these exhibits be marked and entered into evidence. I did cause them to be mailed to Lori Harvey's address prior to this hearing as the court asked. All right. Thank you. So they are received. Then I have no other questions for Mr. Carlson. All right, Ms. Harvey, do you have questions for investigator Carlson? Just to agree with them, I did work at, excuse me? Go ahead. I did work at Holiday Express and I worked there, I think it was until my, until, the, until it happened where I couldn't work. Um, and and that's know. fine. I mean, right now, this is just your, your time to ask him questions based upon the information he provided? Oh. No, ma'am, I'm fine, thank you. Okay, you can step down, thank you. All right, do you have any other witnesses? I don't have other witnesses. However, I have a couple documents that I'm gonna be relying on, so I'm gonna give copies to the court. One of these was also mailed to Lori Harvey. One of these is her submission to the court. And the other two documents are uh, were provided in discovery in the criminal case. They're her bank records from 2019, 2020 that we subpoenaed. Okay. So I'm going to provide those and ask that those be entered into evidence. All right, they will be received. Then at that point, I'd be ready to argue on those documents. Argue or that, okay, just provide an argument. All right. I, can, I can summarize what they say before that? Uh, yes, please. So, so that Ms. Uh, Ms. Harvey will know, and then I'm going to turn to her to see if she would like to provide any further testimony or call any witnesses. What I provided was the entirety of her submission that I got off of CCAP that was submitted to the court. I provided um, a pamphlet from Social Security Administration from 2024 that details a number of programs that a person can do and still collect social security disability while working, as well as detailing how you can work and still get social security disability. And then the other two documents are bank records from her from 2019 and 2020. And I'm going to be explaining how those are very similar to the bank records she's shown the court now. All right, okay. Ms. Harvey, now I'm gonna give you another opportunity. This is your time to uh, um, give me any further information that you would like to um, 
especially if you want to make any statements about those um, employments. Um, and you can call other witnesses if you have them. Okay. Um, as far as Holiday Express, I never was on disability when I worked there. When I worked there, I was not on disability. I hadn't got to the, you know, this injury and everything, hadn't had the accident. So I was, I was working there. I was, yes, I was working there every day. Um, as far as like the flower shop and Susie's, I mean, that was just helping them out. I wasn't full time or anything. I just helped them out and I was excited to make it a fall arrangement. But during that time was also when I was addicted to the Vicodin and Oxy's and I was alcohol and I didn't, I couldn't feel and now I feel and I hurt and I'm not on that kind of medication now anymore. I don't want to ever be on that. I mean, I got to face and deal with what I have to deal with. But um, I did work at Holiday. That was before the accident. I mean, and I I'm, I tried to go back there and I just, you know, Michael, who own, who's the owner there, um, had me come back just to see, but I couldn't do the computers. So I did try to go back. You know, I... I'm not like a bum. I, I always tried to work. But I guess, I mean, I, I, I'm i clean. I'm sober. I mean, I'm doing the best I can. And like I said, I just need to get all these things fixed. And hopefully, you know, I get to the point where I'm going to get my medication straight, where I won't have seizures, and, and I'll be fine. But I just, I'm not there. All right, thank you. Mr. Schmidt, do you have questions? No. Okay, all right. Can somebody tell me, I know that something has been paid towards restitution because she had a vehicle that was seized and, and sold. So what is the remaining amount owed in restitution? I have that. Find it myself. All right. Um, DOC told me back in March, I don't believe there's been any more payments, that she owes $48,078.67, of which $39,542.35 are restitution. So far, um, $20,293.15 is the total amount paid towards restitution, aggregating everything. All right. Okay. And I'm going to guess that the amount of restitution at 20,000 some odd dollars was kind of split up between both victims. I think that so. not one was paid off. That's and right. Vicki is confirming that, that that's, that's true. So they're both still owed. All right. Now, Mr. Schmidt argument and the uh, recommendation as to a suggested monthly amount based upon the evidence and information that we have in front of us. Um, going even broader than that, given this probation review hearing, I'm going to suggest something probably a little broader than that even. I think that Lori Harvey cannot be trusted to give accurate information about her finances in terms of what she's spending and what she's getting in. Um, the reason we're here is she engaged in tremendous deception and guile with her friends to steal a bunch of money through burglary, which required movement and going through and manipulating. She was able to do that. The court ordered her not to touch her bank account. She promised and she did, and she spent out $50,000. Not only really did the court order, the court provided an order to the bank. So how that happened? I'm not causing I don't know. any fault. I'm just, I'm just letting, that's my statement. So the victims are assured that it's not like the court was just going, please don't touch it. You promise, promise. The court did an official order. How it happened and how the funds were spent or allowed to be spent is beyond me. For the sake of my argument is to show the guile and deception and the fact that Lori comes here from a point of lower credibility than normally because of that. And she's here saying she can't work because of medical reasons and she's provided no proof of those medical re reasons. She requires, you know, this is a, re a pseudo restitution hearing. The rules of evidence don't strictly apply, but when you have that credibility issue, you need to bring in those doctor reports talking about workability because she has worked on disability in the past. She said she's been on disability from this accident for 15 to 20 years. 
She's now apparently amending that saying when she was working at Holiday in 2016 that she wasn't collecting disability. Regardless, the report shows that she was working at Walmart in 2019 from May to July at least. Her bank account that I submitted to you shows she was collecting disability as of July of 20, or January of 2019. So she was collecting disability in while she was working at Walmart. She's also been volunteering and working other places. So the idea that disability is her sole income is wrong. She could work. That's what the pamphlets help to show. There's many options for her to work and collect disability. And there's, she's worked in the past. I've seen no evidence of like recent injuries. Uh, it's just all related to this head injury. Furthermore, uh, the documents that she submitted to the court, she tried to show some specific offenses related like electric and phone bill. And she concealed most of her banking records with like a sheet to, to for whatever reason, I'll let the court infer. We do see a couple of entries in there though. We see four eBay purchases and one Temu purchase. Temu is a Chinese online e-commerce website. So we know she spent at least $100 in February where her sole income is $1,100. So the fact that she's saying she has $30 discretionary income every month is just wrong. She either has more coming in or more is leaving out and she's misstating her expenses. There's no other way to explain it. And why I submitted her past records is, you remember, Judge, at sentencing, what was the explanation offered for the behavior? Gambling and spending. When we got her bank records, it shows tons of voodoo purchases, tons of Amazon, tons of Facebook market, tons of online shopping. That's exactly what we see with the eBay now. What I'm asking the court to do is, I think as a condition of probation, the agent has to be looking at her financials and making sure she's not spending on this stuff. I see tons of like minimum payments towards credit cards, which I, she hasn't told the court anything about credit card debt in these past ones. I don't know if the present she's still doing minimum payments towards credit cards. My concern is that what we know about Lori Harvey is when she gets something, she has to spend it. And I think the evidence is she's not spending it on restitution. There's money she could be spending on restitution that she's spending on herself. She's on her phone, not working at home or a computer online shopping and buying stuff for herself or her family or her kids. That money needs to be going to restitution. That's part of the sentence. I think the court needs to fashion a modification to probation so that DOC can has access to those accounts to make sure she's not spending all of her discretionary income on herself. That income needs to be restitution. I also think that she can pay, she can work. So for a court to set an order where just the restitution of 39000 to be paid off by the end of this, it would need to be like $1,400 a month. I don't know if she can work that much because we have very little reliable, accurate information from Lori on that in terms of that and what her expenses must actually be. So I think it needs to be a significant number. She just said that her social security is $200 higher. So even if you believed her, she's basically admitting it's at least $230. If you think she can work at all, even a minimum wage job and do it through social security, that's like another 700 to $1,100 if, if I'm doing that math right. So if she's actually capable of work, I think she could pay the 1400 at a bare minimum. I think the court should set something that should be 800 to a thousand. Uh, I do think that the court can find that due to the lack of credibility she has I mean, she lied on oath saying she hasn't worked while collecting disability or volunteered while collecting, well, to friends. Okay, so that one. So that's what I'm asking the court to do. She clearly can pay. Thank you. Agent Gretchen, when is the out date off of her extended supervision? When would she be able to terminate? Um, at this time, I have one for 2027, 20, Your Honor. Do you know what, what month? Oh, January. January, 2027. All right. All right, Ms. Harvey, you're gonna get an opportunity right now to uh, argue to me. You've heard the argument of the state. What would you like me to consider um, and uh, to hear with regards to this matter? Ma'am. Judge, what I did in the past is in the past. And I, I made mistakes. I made huge mistakes. And I'm not 
you know, out spending money just to spend money. I'm trying to live. You know, I don't have a car. I have no vehicle. I don't have a license. I, I have to have Uber and everything else to go anywhere. My mom is 81 years old. I mean, you, she can't be driving me everywhere. You know, I would love to try to work, you know, but I, 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 like I said, I have, and if you need medical reports stating why I cannot work, I can go to my doctor and have him print out, you know, what everything and send to you from, and, from the disability and me, I never lied about being on disability. And when I worked, I said, I don't remember how long I was on disability. I don't remember the date. I know when I worked at, at, that, um, at the motel, I was not on disability. And I, right in front of the motel, I had a car accident where I got a um, neck injury where the three level fusion. So that caused part of my disability start right there besides, you know, before, I mean, I didn't lie. I just don't remember that you like you people, like everybody's got the exact dates. I don't remember them, ma'am. And I'm not lying to you. All right. I, thank well, you. I'm sorry. Um, it's difficult because from the get-go, the onset of this case, there was money from your accident and the court not only ordered you personally, um, Ms. Harvey, but the court did prepare an official order which was sent to the bank itself. And somehow, for whatever reason, it was worked around and you were able to dwindle and take out all of that $50,000, which could have been used to pay off all of the restitution with some um, additional funding from um, your vehicle and the sale of your vehicle. So we wouldn't even be here today and we wouldn't even have victims that are still here today. Um, we wouldn't have you arguing and um, trying to beg the court um, with regards to the money and, and uh, your financial situation, your health situation, et cetera, you would just be sitting with extended supervision and working with your agent to continue to try and better yourself. I commend you for the positive things that you have been um, doing with your life and your sobriety since you have been released from prison. prison. Um, and that is a great thing. That's a great thing for you. That's a great thing for your mom and her husband. It's a great thing for your daughter. It's quite honestly a great thing for the community because if you are not using, you're not under the influence of a substance or something of that nature, then um, most likely, hopefully, you're not out there victimizing other individuals by stealing and taking what isn't yours to take. This is a difficult situation because the Malins are here and they, I think you understand, I can't get blood out of a turnip. I can't get money that isn't here. And yes, there are credibility issues with Ms. Harvey through the roof up to the top of old smoky credibility issues with Ms. Harvey. But I can't see without adjusting some of this that there could be a monthly payment in even a thousand dollar range. As much as I wish I could do that, I can't see doing that. And quite honestly, I'm gonna be blunt with you. I'm not DOC. I don't make the determination on whether or not to revoke. They rarely revoke for failing to pay restitution. They rarely revoke for failing to pay large amounts of costs and fees and all of those things, okay? So it's not like uh, if she doesn't pay, she's gonna be sent right back to prison. That's if she slips up and she does something else um, using her criminal thinking and she's not sober anymore. So no matter how hard I come down, it doesn't mean she's going to have that punishment of additional incarceration. And this is extended supervision. So I can't go, you make, this is the monthly payment. You make this monthly payment. And if you don't make this monthly payment, I'm sending you to 30 days of jail for each month you've missed. 
I lose that authority because this is extended supervision. This is not probation. She's already been to prison. She's already um, served her punishment for this. And now this is the time where she's supposed to rehabilitate and she's supposed to make the victims whole and to move on. If I had more authority, I had more jurisdiction and power over this, things could be slightly different. But all I have is the, this is what it is, and this is what the punishment can be. I have a, the ability to do other things, such as seek work, which I will do, but it would have to be at the determination of the agent because the agent would need to review her medical because if there is a doctor's note and she can't work because she's indicating she's had surgery, that's up to the agent to seek the work, okay? And to locate employment that won't affect her social security disability. I do have the authority to amend and to modify the judgment of conviction and the conditions of probation to include the fact that she must now seek an insurance policy up to $50,000, making the victims as the beneficiaries up to the amount of the restitution still owing at the time of death. And daughter can be secondary beneficiary because I think that that's appropriate. I don't think a $1,000 uh, insurance policy where you pay $20 a month is worth it to anybody it, but the insurance company because Again, you're just throwing that money down the toilet and it's going to no one because that $20 should be used for an insurance policy for $50,000. Had a similar case where uh, this was ordered as well, where it's not going to be an enormous amount of money on Ms. Harvey. However, it could be about $100 to $150 a month to insure this 50, but I, I don't know, I'm not an insurance agent. So that's where the victims are going to have to say, would you rather have me have an additional $100 a month or a guarantee of because she would need to provide the court with that insurance policy and to continue to show it's in, in, it's in full force and effect where if she does pass away, the money will be paid and you will be paid in full. It's a waiting game. But if the court does that, then... Um, that may be the only way to ensure that the victims are, are made whole. In looking at the financial information that's been provided by Ms. Harvey and the information provided by the state and taking into account that some of it is accurate and true from Ms. Harvey, there's still some wiggle room. Ms. Harvey did state that her social security disability has now increased to $1,304 a month, leaving approximately two, an additional $200 uh, increase um, from what she originally uh, reported. And if we look at certain things, I understand Ms. Harvey that you're, you're telling me that it, 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 it costs you $400 to $500 a month in groceries. And I'm going to say other incidentals, living incidentals. But as a single person living with a parent and another individual, I can't see that as practical or possible. Because again, I budget, I do my budget for my family. Some months, it's more because things happen. You buy meat, you buy bacon, you buy those things that may increase your grocery expenses. But on average, average, it should not cost $400 to $500 a month for one person to eat and or to have incidentals. It just should not. And I've said this to more than one person who's claimed an amount of this or even higher. Uh, it should not. If it does, you need to budget better. You need to not buy the chips and the fillets and the, you know, pork roasts or those kinds of things. You need to stick to what you can afford to eat. When I went to law school, I ate peanut butter sandwiches. I ate potatoes. I ate, you know, canned vegetables, the things that I could afford to eat. 
you need to do the same. You are living with your mom and her husband. The lot rent has increased by $50 a month, you indicated, but your mother has lived in that property and she's been able to afford it. And she's been able to live there without your assistance for 20 or 25 years. She doesn't need your assistance right now. You need your mama. You need your mama because otherwise you aren't going to be able to survive. Yes, and so parents are now raising their own children and or their grandchildren, but that's where we are here today. That is, uh, it's unfortunate, but it's true. You got yourself into this situation and you need the assistance of your family. You, And either your mom's gonna continue to help you and uh, you won't need to have this money go towards her and uh, helping her at this time, or she'll say, you got to move somewhere else and then we'll be in a different spot. But so I am seeing that at least with those things that I have noted and perhaps a few other budgetary items that you can hone in a little bit more And in looking, you have a storage fee of $60 a month in Wisconsin. I don't know what that's for. Maybe you figure it out. Maybe you sell all the things. Maybe you just take the things that are extremely important to you. Maybe uh, those are things that you can find a friend and you can store in their shed and you can cover with tarps. Maybe those are things that you allow your friends to use in their homes uh, until you're able to bring them back to you. So that's an additional $60 a month that I don't think is feasible or practical, at least at this time. And your mom is 81 years old. I'm going to presume that you're going to inherit from her at some time in the future. And hopefully if you inherit something that and uh, your life insurance hasn't kicked in, the one that you're going to be ordered and conditioned to look for and to provide uh, proof to the court that uh, you would use any inheritance to pay off the remaining amount of restitution. I said this multiple times to multiple people, the restitution here is important. I don't really care about the court costs and fees or the DOC costs, don't care. It's about the, well, I care to a point. It's the victims that need to be made whole because the victims are truly innocent people who did not ask to have their things stolen, their money taken. So in looking at all that I'm able to calculate and the fact that I will take you at what word I can of you, Ms. Harvey, right now that you're not able to work due to the surgery. However, at some point you may be able to work after um, you've healed and you've had an additional surgery, et cetera. But at this point in time, I will take you at your word with that, especially with the fact that the court is uh, cutting apart your budget. I am seeing with what I can calculate and with some cutting and saving and penny pinching um, that at, at least in review of your financial situation, you can pay realistically and reasonably every single month, $700 a month. As much as I would like to pay it all off, as much as I would like to do $1,000 or $1,400 a month as the state recommended, I can't make, see that I can make it work. So beginning July, $700 a month will be paid as restitution. The court will continue to have probation review hearings to ensure that the payments are being done. And if not, uh, and to make sure that the insurance policy has been uh, secured and that the beneficiaries are the victims up and up to the amount that will be remain remaining owed at the time of death with the secondary beneficiary of your daughter or whomever you choose to have um, and to alter or adjust or to modify other conditions such as seek work and additional proof of medical and or other um, means to achieve 
payment of the restitution. So what I'm going to do right now is set another hearing to ensure that uh, all of that has been accomplished and taken care of. I'm going to schedule August 12th at 10.15. August 12th at 10.15, we will have a probation review hearing. I will get updated on uh, the insurance information and or medical information and the ability uh, to even work. Um, right now it's not a seek work. Oh. It's a potential to seek work. Um, and right now it would be, um, if you want to add that as a modification, um, it would be seek work with agents um, discretion based upon medical. So she would need to provide her medical um, information, medical notes, et cetera, doctor's excuses to her agent to make that determination. And I understand your financial situation, Ms. Harvey. I do take that into account. And I do need to look at those types of things to determine a restitution amount that would be owed. Um, but when we're looking at restitution, I again, I do have to look at the payment of restitution, but the court doesn't have to look at uh, whether or not you would essentially be suffering because that's a part of the conviction. It's not to ensure that you can have a good life and you can have the filet and the Coca-Cola or those types of things. It's to ensure that you are making every effort that you can to be able to pay off, um, pay off this restitution. It's not to punish you but it is to ensure that there is a plan to make the victims whole. All right. With that, Mr. Schmidt. I would just ask that also as the court makes a finding of law as to what it's predicating its order on it, also base it on section 9M, the self-executing portion of that for uh, assistance collecting restitution. I, I think this order is also based on that and that's what the victims originally filed as well. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed what you had said, what? Uh, to also base the legality order on Section 9M, the Marcy's Law provision, oh, self-executing yes. about assistance collecting restitution. Yes, exactly. The court uh, um, will adopt that as stated by Mr. Schmidt and through Marcy's Law. All right, anything further? Not for me. All right. Then we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you. And Ms. Bauer, you might want to inform um, the victims that uh, extended supervision is not like probation, where even if she doesn't pay, I cannot extend it as I could with probation. Okay.